Welcome to the first video in Linear Algebra, a course about linear equations and a bunch of cool things we can do with them. It's going to help out if we start off talking about what a linear equation is. You've seen these in high school, it's nothing to be afraid of, but I might look a little bit more in depth here. So a linear equation with variables x1 through xn can be written as following. It's a constant a1 times x1 plus another constant a2 times x2 and we add a bunch of more terms until we get to our constant a n times x n, and this is equal to some number b. For example, the equation 3x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 6. Or, perhaps you might be more familiar looking at this equation as 3x plus 4y is equal to 6, and then you can solve for y. This is exactly the same thing we're talking about, but instead of x's, y's, and z's, we use x1, x2 all the way up to xn because we work in more than two or three dimensions, and keeping track of all the letters can be unnecessarily confusing when we want to refer to exactly the same thing. So what is a system of linear equations? Well, it's just one or more linear equations. So for instance, you might have x1 plus x2 is equal to 5, and then we have 3x1 plus x2 is equal to 7. And with this information, we can find solutions for x1 and x2. So we can say, okay, well, x1 is probably 3, x2 is going to be 4, or something like that. I guess x1 in this case would be 1, and x2 would be 3. So, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. We could solve this, but that's not quite yet. So those are linear equations. And when we graph linear equations, we're talking about lines. So if we have two equations, we can have a line that looks like this and a line that looks like this, and they're going to meet at some point. So here we have x1 is going to equal some number a, and x2 is going to equal some number b in this case. So here we have an intersection of lines and we get one explicit solution. Another possibility is that we have infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to do line one in yellow and then I'll do line two in blue. And as we can see, these are exactly the same lines. I did not draw them very well, but we have exactly the same line so they're equal to each other at every possible position. Another possibility is that the lines are parallel, so they don't have any solutions. So in this case, the two lines will never meet. So that this is explicitly in two dimensions, so we'd have two equations to get these three different possibilities of solutions. But if we had three equations, we might have three dimensions. So if we have variables x1, x2, and x3, we'd be working in three dimensions. If we have x1 through x4, we'd have four dimensions. So in this case, we're only dealing with the variables x1 and x2 in all three of these cases. So here we have the x1 axis, and up here we have the x2 axis. So these are the only possibilities we could have for solutions. Why can we only have one or infinitely many? Because we're dealing with straight lines. So this line is never going to meet up over here at any point, and it's never going to meet up on this side at any point. Can't happen. If we had a parabola, that would be different, but we don't. So a system is consistent if we have at least one solution. Otherwise, it's going to be inconsistent. So in the first example here, we have x1 plus x2 is equal to 3, but x1 plus x2 is equal to 5. Well, this is weird because we're saying, okay, in x1 plus x2 is equal to 3, if we take the sum of the two points, then we have a line that looks like this. So that's our x1 plus x2 is equal to 3. In our second one, well, we have the same idea here, where x1 plus x2 is equal to 5, but these lines will never meet each other, so there is no solution. So this set 
or system is inconsistent because there are no solutions to it. And we can basically see that the same number of variables is equal to different numbers. So we can tell these are inconsistent. Now, this over here, 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 5, x1 plus x2 is equal to 3, we can solve for a solution here. So what we can do is we can subtract the second equation from the first, and we can get x1 is equal to 2. So 2x1 minus x1 is x1, x2 minus x2 is 0, 5 minus 3 is 2. So if our x1 is equal to 2, then that means that x2 is equal to 1. So we can find explicit solutions. So where do these lines meet? Well, when x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to 1, these lines are going to meet right here. So we might have one that looks like this, and we might have one line that looks like that. So we get our solution there. So this system is going to be consistent because it has one or more solutions. So these are the terminologies we're going to be using, inconsistent and consistent. Here's where linear algebra and these equations get a little bit nicer. Because we deal with so many variables and we know how to use them, or at least we will know how to use them, we don't like to write out x1, x2, x3 every time. It's a lot of work. So instead we do a coefficient matrix where we only write the coefficients in there. So for instance, line one in the coefficient matrix, we have one x1, so write a one there, plus two x2, plus 0x3. Then in the second line we have 3x1, we have 0x2, and we have negative 4x3. In the third line we have 2x1, minus 1x2, and plus 1x3. This is a coefficient matrix because we only look at the coefficients in front of the variables. An augmented matrix looks at the same details, so we can copy 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, negative 4, 2, negative 1, 1, but it also encodes the solutions in there. So we have 5, 2, and 6. So this augmented matrix encodes the whole system, including the solutions. So when we talk about matrices, I will always talk about augmented matrices. Sometimes we have this dotted line in here to indicate that this last line are the things on the other side of the equation or the quote unquote solution to that. But for the most part, I'm just going to not include those lines. I will in the first couple of videos, but after that, I'm going to remove those lines. So what do we do with these? Well, Nothing quite yet, because we need to talk about some terminology, and we need to talk about how to actually solve those systems of equations first. So when we have a matrix, we have to give it a size, and we have to be consistent with our naming so we know what we're talking about here. So when I say this matrix above, this augmented matrix is a 3 by 4 matrix, you need to be able to think in your head 3 by 4 and come up with the size and the shape of it immediately. So when we have a matrix, we talk about m by n, which means m rows times n columns. So before, when we had our matrix, our augmented matrix is 3 by 4, which means we have 1, 2, 3 rows. These go across, so that's 3 across, and we have 4 columns going down, so this is 3 by 4 m by n, rows by columns. So that's the size of a matrix. So here's a question for you. If a coefficient matrix is j by 5, so j rows by 5 columns, what's the size of its corresponding augmented matrix? So for a picture here, uh, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's j rows, so we have a couple rows there. We don't know how many rows are there, but it's that. So how many rows and columns does an augmented matrix have? Well, remember, an augmented matrix just adds the right-hand side of the equation into the mix. 
So we get some numbers here. We get like A1, A2, all the way down to AJ, and then it closes off. So what that means is we get one more column. So that's going to be J by 6. So those are linear equations, systems of equations, and how we encode those systems into matrices. Next time we'll take a look at how we can solve those systems. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to them as quick as I can.